Hey everybody, welcome back inside the Stash Report from the Stash Project. This is going to be our uh, special video for the All Japan Model and Hobby Show 2018. This is going to be sort of our preview video for what to expect for that show. Now that show will be coming up here at the end of September, the last weekend, and we will do another sort of follow-up, uh, probably just in a regular weekly video of, uh, you know, images that we get from various people, of, of you know, showing prototypes and, and and you know all that sort of things we do for Shizuka and Nuremberg and all that sort of thing. But in the meantime, these are going to be the kits uh, that will be released in November uh, and December of 2018. Uh, and then, of course, when we get to the show, we'll see stuff from Bell Kits, B Max, and things like that that'll be further out along the way. But in the meantime, this stuff that we're uh, going to cover today should be uh, the end of the fourth quarter, basically, of 2018. So uh, we have. Uh, announcements from Aoshima. We have announcements from Hasagawa. One from Tamiya, and then uh, we finally got the release date for the Lancia Delta S4 from Bmax, which is December, by the way. So if you've been waiting on that one, looks like Christmas time is uh, calling your name, as it were. Now there's one announcement from, from Tamiya. Now this is not going to, I guess, appease a lot of people because there's a lot of, you know guessing and subjection as to what the Tamiya kit could possibly be for the fall. Uh, I don't think this is necessarily on anybody's wish list per se, but it's one of those kits that I'll pick up just because of the substantial collection of this car brand that I have. But they're going to be doing a uh, 2018, possibly 2019, because the cars effectively look identical, but it's just a matter of what wheels are on the car. The 2018 Nissan 370Z Heritage Edition. Now, this is what it looks like. Uh, basically, this car is going to be available in two colors. It's either banana yellow like this or black with apparently flip-flopped, uh, you know, striping. Obviously, the striping will be yellow on the black car. And only available in black or yellow. And there's, and I think the yellow trim, because you can see the top of the steering wheel is yellow. The uh, yellow trim is, is, you know, requisite for both. Uh, sort of a throwback to an earlier color from the 240Z. Uh, I know, I know. It's not exactly like anything special per se. I mean, there already is a 370Z tooling, so this is not a new tool kit. This is a modified reissue, though it's putting some new wheels in it. And there's also going to have to uh, update the front fascia to the 2013 to current spec. The kit that they made was like a 2008 or 2009, and it has the original 370Z front end on it. And, uh, yeah, like I said, it's, it's, it's not exactly fantastical. It's more along the lines of when they uh, did the, like, uh, street custom version of the Subaru BRZ and the street custom version of the, of the R32 GTR uh, Nismo and things like that, where they're just sort of adding a few bits and calling it new. Now, one thing I have noticed is, based on what this kit number is going to be, they're still missing a kit. When the AMG GT3 race car came out, that is kit 24345. When the molded in yellow LaFerrari came out, that was kit 24347. And this uh, Nissan is going to be 24348. So there's still a 24346. Now, they're just in numerical order. Otherwise, they don't really make any, you know, there's no difference to them. So that whatever that kit is, it still has not been released or announced or, or whatever. I don't know if they even hinted at really. Uh, so whatever that's going to be, still don't know, and they've never skipped a number any point in time in their entire history. Uh, you, you get kits with new numbers when there's something substantial done to them in terms of, of tooling or retooling or, or modified reissue, like the 370Z will be. So whatever that two, whatever that 346 kit is, we'll hey, we're just still hanging out waiting to see. Uh, even when kits have been reissued as themselves, like, ooh, hey, look, here's that other headlight version of the AMG GT3 kit, they've usually had a couple of numbers in between them. Like, if you look at the LaFerrari and then the FXXK, uh, they're, you know, essentially the same sort of kit. I mean, there's a lot of different parts. I mean, you argue they're two separate kits entirely, but obviously one is designed on the architecture of the other in terms of some of the pieces and parts when you really sit down and compare them. 
But those kits were 10 numbers apart. It's like one is 323 and the other one's 333. There were actually 10 kits released in that time span. When they reissue things, like they did when they reissued the 2CB Citron and the Savannah RX-7 GT and things like that, when those kits are straight reissued, they do not renumber them. So it won't be a reissue that they haven't announced. It's something else that's still lingering. Uh, and right now, we still don't get to know what that is. But in the meantime... Uh, you'll get a Nissan. Now, there's no. This was just uh, put up on, on the uh, Tamiya blog, uh, either last night or this morning. I think it was last night, and uh, so there's no release date attached to it per se. But it'll be sometime in the uh, end of the uh, the end of the, the uh, year, more likely probably December. I would be would be my guess, just because it hasn't been you know put up for pre-order yet. So. I'm sure it'll probably pop up before the weekend, before this week is out, but in the meantime, all the rest of the stuff we're talking about has release dates, and this one does not. It was just a sort of tossed up there. Uh, for the military guys and other people who build, you know, beyond cars, the one new tool kit that I know that they're doing for sure uh, for the fall will be a 135th scale M3, or was it M? Yeah, M3A1, I believe is the designation, a scout car, which is a little World War II um, light, I don't think it was armored necessarily, but because I just looked it up to see what it was, <laughs> because it's one of those things where I was like, I, I, it sounds familiar, but I can't place it, but yeah, it was something made by a white motor company, which of course made trucks, uh, and it's a little truck scout vehicle type thing, so people who are interested in World War II ground vehicles that are not tracked and not a uh, tank, there's something for you guys uh, coming this fall. So that'll take us to, uh, let's go to this uh, flyer from BMAX real quick. So this is the flyer they put out for the Lancia Delta S4. Again, this will be a December release. There is a photo etch detail upset that's going to be sold separately. It's going to have uh, antenna, the air jack injector, because that seems to be a thing they do with every kit these days. Of course, you have your uh, fabric for your seatbelt in there, and then you have a whole bunch of what would be three uh, frets of photo etch. Um, be interested to see what a couple of those things that look like they need to be bent in 18 different directions are, are really going to represent. Because they don't, you know, it's, it's looking at a one-dimensional cutout like that. It's kind of hard to see what some of that stuff might be. Obviously, the other one's vents and grills and brake faces and things like that. And the seatbelt uh, hardware to make two sets of seatbelts. This will be done, of course, in the Martini livery because that's the only way this car ever ran. Uh, for the 1986 Monte Carlo rally, so there is that for the people who are looking forward to that. Now, honestly, I, like I said I don't. The rally car thing to me is kind of new. I don't still don't go out and just buy rally cars to buy them, uh, but that is certainly something that I'm interested in and will be getting just because I have been, of course, obtaining all of the Group B rally cars. So the uh, other thing we'll talk about here will be Aoshima. Now they've got a few little retooled. Uh, kits that are going to be coming out this fall. One of them, and these are all December, by the way. And we'll talk about all of the December kits here in a second, but these are the ones that are going to be uh, significantly changed. One is going to be, let me get my, my page here, it's going to be the uh, Kiyosaki Takahashi FD3S RX-7 in the Project D version. Uh, this will have a whole new aerodynamic body package for it, as well as a roll cage and some other interior racing bits to act to, well, accurately might be too much of a word when you're talking about a comic strip, but to make the car look more like the car in the comic strip. Obviously, the Project D we know uh, as a thing for the A86 Truno. There's a Project D version of that. Uh, I don't believe that these, these two cars race each other necessarily. Uh, directly, but then I don't know enough about the comics to, you know, say that for certain. I mean, in this picture, it's racing a first-gen NSX, which is something Tommy doesn't have, or something that, rather, Aoshima doesn't have. But, uh, yeah, I said, this will be sort of like the uh, R32 and the F, uh, C3, FC3S RX-7 that they did little mod mod ugh, minor modifications to to make those two uh, hill battle uh, cars, so... Uh, for, you know, anime, manga, Initial D, or just Mazda fans, you have another RX-7 uh, version coming. And then you have uh, this, which would be the next of the Liberty Works, Liberty Walk R35 GTRs. And you're sitting there going, what? Another one? Yes, another one. This is nominally known as the Type 2 Version 1. Uh, 
sure, okay, fine. Uh, this the object, the, the very obvious things here is the very very large front uh, wing canards that are on this that are much, you know that are not on the other ones. But this kit actually is going to have a completely new front fascia, a completely new rear fascia, new mufflers. Uh, you know, there's a lot of parts to go with the fascias, or headlights, and tail lights, and, and fog lights, and those canards, and, and all sorts of things like that. It's still going to keep the same set of wheels because Liberty Walk has this set of, of wheels, and they really apparently like them a lot. And it's going to have the uh, GT3 style wing out of the version 2 kit in it because that's what comes with this version of the car. And, uh, you yeah, know, new decals, obviously. But, man, we are really plumbing the depths of uh, Liberty Works in their. Over fendering of the R35. Uh, I would love to see them over fender something else at this point, like a Murcielagio or an Aventador or, well, anything else other than this GTR, because now at this point, this will be the fourth one of these. And I think, you know, you run into a danger. Now, I know these are very popular kits with a lot of people, but, you know, for people who sort of I don't know, are the one percenters, as it were, in the hobby? Like, you know, you, you watch the show, you know what kits are coming. How many of these do you need? Because at one at some point or another, they all start kind of looking kind of alike. <clears throat> Say what you will about the other Liberty Walk kits of the classic, uh, like Nissan, the Laurels, and the older GTRs. But, you know, they're, they're different enough that you could collect all eight of them and not build the same exact kit twice. Uh, this is kind of getting there, but hey, you know, whatever. Uh, this kit will also come with a photo etch set, sold separately, not come with, sold separately. And that'll be the first photo etch set for one of these uh, that's been available. Hobby Design has made photo etch sets for the other ones, but apparently they've seen that and, and they're going to do with their own for this kit, again, coming out in December. And then the last significant reissue... Uh, and again, this is a reissue, something we've known that has been coming, if you knew what the parts were that you didn't use in the original kit, but it's taken two years to finally get this kit to come out, and that's because the supercar terrain had sort of derailed over at Aoshima for a while, and that's going to be a reissue of the Hurricane, the Lamborghini Hurricane, as the Performante, or Perform Performante uh, edition. Now that's going to have new front fascia parts, new rear fascia parts that are specific to the car. It's not a complete and total new body or anything else like that. It's just sort of uh, a front splitter, a rear splitter. Uh, the car has a very large fixed rear wing that was not on the original Hurricane, obviously. It has a new engine cover, the rear hatch area, uh, some Performante-specific engine pieces, because uh, that kit does have a, a full detail engine in it and uh, some new wheels. So, finally, we'll get the, the Hurricane Performante. Now we need the Aventador, the next Aventador that was along the line, because there's a newer, more performance-oriented Aventador that has come out since the last time the Aventador has been reissued. Uh, you know, you have the, the Pangana Warrior, uh, Tempesta, whatever the hell they're calling that. I, to, just, it was in my head and popped right back out there. The Pachetta Tempesto. So now we're gonna get two supercars at the end of the uh, end of the month or end of the year here, because one the Pangani is supposed to come out in October. This is gonna come out in December, hopefully. Both of those kits are probably more likely to come out on time, uh, just because those tooling, you know, things were done when the kits were done originally. Then like the new tool R34 four door, which again is at this point still doesn't have an actual. A firm release date. It's just sort of free floating in uh, 2018 at this point. Some other things that are going to be released from Aoshima in December that were announced for the show are two of the old mobile catering uh, trucks. The little, I think they're Subaru Sandbars, really old ones, motorized base uh, versions, not the new ones that they did in 2012. Uh, these are really crazy Japanese uh Catering is not exactly what I would call these. some of these, because there's several of them. They're going to reissue two of them. I imagine they'll probably reissue the other two, and have you'll have all four of them again. Uh, the last time these were reissued was right when we started doing this show, because I remember talking about these before. Uh, and one is going to be the Mobile Game Center, which is sort of a 1980s uh, sort of video game. They kind of, it's, it's sort of like based on a food truck kind of thing. Obviously a very, very small K food truck. Uh, but it's a, a video game center, and the other one is the Octopus Dumpling food truck, which is just a hysterical uh, amount of goofiness that goes on with that. Um, some very, you know, we always talk about the 
LSD era of like the the 1970s and maybe early 1980s AMT and MPC customs that were done, where everything had IMSA flares and and just really wild graphics, and somebody was smoking some cool stuff when they designed that kit. This is sort of the Japanese equivalent of that, perhaps minus the actual drugs, but whew, it's some interesting things if you haven't seen them before. And then they're going to reissue four more of the More Grand Champions uh, series, so we're going to get them all at this point. Uh, would just be my guess, uh, since you have like two of them being reissued in October, two of them being reissued in November, and now four more reissued in December. That'll be eight of the 16, so we'll be halfway there. And they're going to be a Ken and Mary four-door Skyline, a, a 430 series Nissan Cedric, a C10, which would be an early 1960s, early, or late 60s, early 70s, uh, Nissan Skyline four-door, and a Nissan Gazelle convertible. They've never offered that, at least I don't think, the convertible as like a factory stock car. The closest that they've come is uh, one for a TV show tie-in. Obviously, these more grand champions are big over fenders, small 14-inch wheels. That's where all these 14-inch wheel sets have come from in the past. So if there's four more of those for the people who are interested in them. And then two cars that are going to be put into the model car line for December are two kits that have not been out for... Uh, 15 years, no, excuse me, 20 years at this point. Last reissue on these was 1998. And they fetch a pretty hefty sum on eBay. I managed to pick mine up for relatively decent prices, but not as cheap as these will be with the reissues. And they are the 1968 MGB Mark II and the 1974 MGB Mark III, which is, of course, the urethane uh, edition, or the urethane, as it was labeled originally, in 1994, missing one of the vowels. But yeah, so these are the little uh, MGB uh, Roadsters. Uh, there's actually two more that are like a uh, like club spec uh, club spec race cars of both of these. Uh, I would expect probably seeing those sometime in 2019. Uh, but these kits go for a ridiculous amount of money, um, mainly because it's been 20 years since the last time they were reissued, and I'm not sure that the 20 year ago reissues were actually sold, you know, domestically as far as being imported in the United States. Most of the ones I've seen are the 1994 originals because American Satco imported those kits and in some cases put a resin, very bad, but resin nonetheless, dash, left hand drive dashboard into them. Now these, because again, Satco, resin, doesn't exist anymore. America Satco went out of business 20 years ago, probably as well. Uh, these will have the original kit, uh, you know, right hand drive things because they are UK British spec cars. So, again, for people who, like, you know, have been looking at those but, or, you know, did not want to spend 80 to to $100 on one, hey, poof and shazam, they're going to be 22 bucks again. So, uh, Peter, like I said, I imagine the race cars will come back. Uh, eventually as well. Now will take us over to Hasegawa. They have uh, quite a few things coming out. Now, there's only going to be one brand new tool kit for uh, the fall. It's not anything that I was necessarily expecting, but I know it's certainly something that a lot of people will be very, very interested in, especially the race car fans. Uh, and then we have, like I said, a bunch of other stuff that we'll cover here uh, relatively uh, you know, some more in depth than others because some of the stuff is just straight reissues and some of the stuff is modified tooling. So I'm going to do these in the order they're expected to be released. That way they make some sense to me as far as what I'm talking about here. But first up uh, on the modified reissue train here will be this. This is the 1988 season of uh, Japanese touring car. Uh, this would be the Rico sponsored R31 GTSR. This kit will just get uh, new wheels. They're going to have Panasport wheels put into this to match, accurately match the real car. But otherwise, the car is just a straight reissue of the uh, Calsana car that was just done a couple months ago. Obviously, uh, with new uh, graphics. My, I didn't look to see what color this is going to be molded in. Let me look real quick. Because I think it's molded in red and the decals are going to be white. It's going to bug me. <laughs> Because making re that many red decals, or they may make you paint a two tone. Let me look here. Because all of these, I, I know what color all of these are molded in except this one. Um, let's see, if they say. Eh, it doesn't say. That's why I don't know. 
Okay, well, we'll see what color that ends up being molded in. Uh, this is going to be released at the end of October. There's actually box art for this already, so, uh, you know, it'll be uh, it's interesting to see what they do with that. If it's molded in white, they're probably going to make you paint the two-tone. Uh, if it's molded in red, then the decals may, you know, be cover the thing. There's very little white to that. It's just the, the you know, a stripe on the front fender, the, the sort of door itself, the spoiler, which probably would make you paint, because why would you give a decal for the spoiler? And then there's the roof itself, would you know, it, there's there's enough there that I don't necessarily think you need to, uh, you know, decals, painting, decals, painting. It's it's kind of hard to tell where where Hasegawa would go with something like that because a lot of times you think, oh hey, that's an easy decal, and they make you paint the two tone. And other times you're like, well that's 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 a lot of two tone that I'm gonna be painting, and they give you decals for everything. So we'll see <laughs> what they do with that sooner than anything else because like I said, that's the end of October. Now, that's the only one that's going to come out in October. Everything else from after that is, uh, you know, a little further down the line. So in November, uh, they've got a couple of said modified reissues. First up, we'll talk about this. This is the, uh, I guess it'd be the Coros Mercedes Sauber C9 from 1987. They're going to put some new pieces in here. I believe parts of them are going to be uh, wing-related, and part of it is going to be front-end related based on the translation because it's, it's kind of dicey. But this was the debut uh, for the Sauber C9. It was like two races at the very end of the World Sports Car Prototype Series. Uh, of course, the car would C9 car would go on to become quite famous in 1988-1989. So some new parts there, obviously new livery for the 1987 season. The other major reissue for the month of November will be this. It is the 1973 Mitsubishi Colt Galant 2000 GSR. Now, the, G, uh, the GTO MR, the kit that just came out, is a 1971. So this is a few little couple years down the road from that. and is the top-of-the-line sports car in 1973. This car is going to have a whole new chassis pan. I'm not exactly sure why that that requires that, but it, it's what it says. New chassis pin, new front end parts, new rear end parts, uh, there's new muffler, new interior pieces, new front seats, new back seats, new steering wheel. Uh, new uh, The over fenders will be separate. They're not going to be molded into the body. So as I said, new, uh, a new chassis, but not a new body. So the over fenders for here as well. So a good chunk of new kit here. Uh, the price on this is a little higher than everything else because obviously there's so much new involved there. But so uh, when we talked about in the end of the weekly video, like what we thought we would see, you know, Mitsubishi was one of the things that was up there, and it is something that uh, they're going to do another version of. And then also in uh, November, you're going to get a reissue of the Sauber C9 1988, which is the, the uh, blue car with a like the circuit board livery, uh, reissue of the Jaguar XJR8 Le Mans, and a reissue, and this is something I haven't been seen for a while either, and then the 124th scale, because of course, 124th scale F1, why not? Honda RA272E uh, 1965 F1 car. So uh, I know the Otomiya did that in 120th scale, and there's this Hasegawa did 124th scale one, so that'll be coming back as well. And that takes us to December. So December, we're going to get uh, a couple of things here. One will be the all-new tool, and that is going to be this, which is a uh, Nissan R91. Now, the R89 is the last injected styrene kit of the Group C cars that Nissan did. There is an R90, that was a resin, and there is an R91, which is also done in resin in the past. So we're going to get a new tool injected molded version here expect this to be a simplified curbside the way all of the rest of Hasegawa's Group C cars have been to date uh, this car and specifically in the Calisonic livery represents the uh, 1991 Japanese sports car prototype, prototype series championship car has uh, won the championship so there's a there's several other liveries for this car this car ran uh, through pretty much 1993 now, 1993, the actual Group C race series that Japan did evaporated. It became turned into to the Japanese uh, touring car, which would go into become Super GT at this point. Uh, so the Group C cars disappeared, but they still ran 
the World uh, Sports Car Championship Series still ran in 1993, obviously. But it has gone on to this point to become, you know, World Endurance uh, Series, uh, or WEC, the World Endurance Championship. So there are other options for this kit as far, you know, as, far as liveries and configurations, well as uh, for another two or three years. So expect probably a couple, three kits maybe out of this uh, overall in different liveries that the car ran other than just this one uh, CalSonic car. And then we have several of things uh, that I grouped together as a group of three, and I realize it's kind of small for you guys. <coughs> but these are all three of these kits will be coming out in December, and they all have minor revisions to it. So from the top to the bottom, you have the venerable Nissan 240Z Rally car. Now this is not being reissued in the Safari Rally version, which is the only way it's ever come. This is going to have uh, some new decals, obviously, to represent the car as it was run in the 1972 Monte Carlo Rally. Now, it finished third in that rally, so it is a podium car. Uh, and, based on what I've seen in, in the description, it's going to have a left-hand drive dashboard in it. That is the only Hasegawa 240Z that I'm aware of that comes has ever come with a left-hand drive dashboard. So, probably a left-hand drive scuttle panel in there as well. Um, now I'm not saying it's worth buying a $35 model kit just for a dashboard, but, you know, if you've wanted to build a Hasegawa 240Z, it's probably the best 240Z kit out there. If Fujimi makes one, and they do make one that has a couple different engine options, but it doesn't really have an engine bay, per se, uh, now you have that opportunity. But let's see if they decide to reissue any of the other... 240Z kits with that left-hand drive dashboard in it or not. But that's a certainly an option out there. Hobby Design is going to be doing a Rocket Bunny over fender kit for the Hasegawa 240Z in the next couple of months, and so it, it may be worth buying the rally car to be the base for that if you're interested in something like that, because again, left-hand drive dashboard. So next in the middle there, you have another reissue of the Isuzu Gemini, kit number three for this. This car is going to be done in the JT150 specification. Basically, before the Imsure Turbo that we got already, uh, you know, in the beginning of 2018, you had a 1.5 liter turbocharged version of the car. Now, the Imsure Turbo, obviously a turbo after that, but it's a bigger engine. So this car is going to have uh, a different steering wheel and a different hood with a... Uh, some people call it a knockout duct, you know, a, a air duct, but it's going to have an intake, a very specific intake for the turbo. Uh, otherwise, you know, reissue of the Imsha Turbo with a, those great monoblock wheels. And then down here at the bottom, you have uh, another reissue of the streetcar version of the new R31 tool. This is going to be a GTS, which is just sort of the regular Skyline. The GTS R, of course, is a very special. Uh, car that made 823 of total their uh, modularization car for the group a race car that is the kit that has already come out this is going to be uh like i said a gts and the little thing that they've done here is this car is prepared by nismo which of course is the nissan racing development side of things and they made 1000 of these in 1987 to celebrate the uh, 30th anniversary of the Skyline. Skyline originally came out in 1957. Obviously, it was a very, very different car than we know it as, well, now it's sort of just a, a four-door family car. But for that time and span where the GTR existed <laughs> from the 1960s to the 1973 and then from the R32 through the R34, because <clears throat> technically the R35 is not a Skyline, uh, you know, the 19, in 1987 we're at the 30th anniversary. So this car... Uh, has a, a different front bumper because the GTS, just in general, has a different front bumper than the GTS-R. Uh, different rear trim. It's going to have optional BBS wheels. Now, these can't be the BBS wheels out of the, the race car kit because those would be center locks. So you're going to have to, uh, a different set of BBS wheels. I don't know if these could be the BBS wheels out of the ZZ Tuning uh, Zuzu or not. Maybe a whole new set of BBS wheels, and you can never have too many BBS wheels, so that's always a good thing. And then uh, it's, there's going to be uh, Nismo bucket seats in here. It's, I can't find any information on the actual car itself, uh, mainly because it's a very, very limited edition, and it's not something I guess was really considered to be like an actual designated model of the 
R31 in terms of like GTS X, GTS R, GTS R, you know, GTS itself. So uh, research will be needed. Uh, that's going to be molded in dark blue. And, you know, <laughs> Hasegawa has made a very uh, fine living in the last couple of uh, years of making a, a very unique, interesting new tool and then giving us a whole bunch of them. I mean, when you consider the two race cars and the two street cars, we've gotten four R31s in the span of like six months, and, and we're not done there. There's going to be uh, a good deal more race cars, uh, GTSX, and like I said, we'll probably turn it into an R30 without all that much trouble, a new body, and that's, you know, and minimal investment compared to a whole brand new tool. And, uh, also, in December, straight releases, going to get a reissue of the uh, YHP livery Nissan R89C, Japanese sports car prototype car, and a reissue of the 2003 Finland Rally winning Ford Focus Rally car. And then one thing I want to touch on, one's going to come out in November, one's going to come out in December, are reissues of a series that was done back in the late 1980s uh, that are, was known as the American 66 series. Several American cars were done by Hasegawa, uh, mainly because I believe there were copies of American... The story I've heard, let me put it to you that way, is that these were copies of American kits that uh, Daiyushu did as slot car bodies. That at some point, either Daiyushu or Hasegawa decided to add sort of a generic uh, V8 rear-wheel drive American... Uh, motorized chassis platform and some rather cruddy, very shallow interiors into, and make model kits out of. Uh, so these are going to come back as low riders. Um, one's the flame style and one's the wave style here. I do not expect either of these kits to be exported to the United States, simply because if you translate the Japanese, it is a 1966 low rider type C and a 1966 low rider type. T. They, I don't know if they did or not, I'm not sure how you release them otherwise, but at least within the titling of it, are not paying the licensing to use the name Cadillac and Thunderbird. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't necessarily believe that you will see these directly released into the United States. You know, Hasegawa, I believe they're using Stevens International now because of the whole Habako debacle. Uh, you know, they, they'll export kits to the United States. Now, whether or not you can find them really depends on how well stocked your local hobby shop would ever be. Obviously, they don't go to their hobby lobby or anything else like that. Um, I can think of what we have what, seven hobby shops here in, in the Pittsburgh area, and I can think of one that carries Hasegawa stuff as a rule of thumb. The other one I can get it through, but only one of them actually stocks them on the shelves. Uh, I, said, I, do not, I don't think you're going to get those through. Uh, just regular channels, just because, uh, you know, they're not using the Cadillac term, the Thunderbird term, um, makes me wonder <laughs> that those are going to be uh, Japanese-only releases, uh, home market. Basically, you paid for the licensing within Japan, and that was it. Uh, that, of course, doesn't mean you will be able to go through Hobby Link Japan or things, something like that to get one, but, uh, yeah, I don't ever expect to see that just sitting on the shelf with the other Hasegawa kits. Um, and that, guys, I, I, for the moment, anyway, wraps up the, uh, this video. Um, I said we'll probably get more information uh, about other things at the show itself. But uh, for what is available for pre-order, now a lot of stuff is available for pre-order at Hobby Link Japan, except the, the Heritage Edition Tommy kit, because that actually has not been pre-order released yet, but uh, all the Hasegawa stuff, all of the Aoshima stuff, as well as the Lancia are all available for pre-order and uh, well, now you know how you're going to spend your money for the fall. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you guys next time.